By the end of this video, you'll know how to use the sketch mirror command in Fusion 360. The sketch mirror command can be activated from the sketch dropdown list or from the right click sketch menu. The sketch mirror command lets you mirror or reproduce the selected sketch geometry on the other side of the selected mirror line. It's important to note that the sketch mirror command does differ from the mirror command located in the create dropdown list. The sketch mirror command only works for two dimensional sketches, whereas the create mirror command works with faces, features, bodies, and components. For this video, I've gone ahead and set up some reference geometry. If you'd like to follow along, you can click that link down below in the video description to download the demo file. With no sketch active, you'll see that the mirror command is actually grayed out or disabled, as you'll have to be in an active sketch environment in order to use the mirror command. I'll double click on the first sketch in the timeline to open it up, which will place me in the sketch environment. You'll see that I have this sketch geometry set up for a part that is symmetrical. In order to save time and energy from sketching out the entire part, I've simply sketched out the left half of the part, which I'll mirror over the center line to complete the right half of the part. I'll activate the mirror command from the sketch dropdown list. And once the mirror dialog is open, you'll see that we have to select the objects to mirror. Now one common mistake that I see with the mirror command is that people will want to quickly mirror the sketch geometry, so they decide to just click and drag over all the geometry to select it. The problem with this is that oftentimes it's going to select way more than we need, which will not only overcomplicate the mirror function, but it may also cause some issues. You'll see that it says I currently have 21 different elements selected. I'll cancel that by selecting the X next to the object selection. Then I'll select the geometry one by one, making sure to select all of the outside sketch geometry and then the circle at the bottom. After selecting the geometry, you'll notice I have only nine pieces of sketch geometry selected, which is a lot less than the 21 selected before. In order to complete the mirror, you'll have to select the mirror line. I'll click on the mirror line selection, and then I'll try to select the vertical line that's on the green Y axis. And you'll notice that it won't let me select it. And that's because the mirror line cannot be the same as any of the geometry selected to mirror. I wanted to point this out as this is another common error that I see users do with the mirror command as they wonder why the mirror command won't let them select a mirror line. To fix this, I'll select the object selection in the dialog box and then select that middle vertical line, which deselects it. Then I'll reselect the mirror selection and select the vertical line once again. This time, you'll see the mirror line worked and the mirror command is also giving us a preview of the sketch geometry that will be mirrored. It's always a good idea to take a look at the preview, as you may notice you selected some geometry by accident, or you accidentally left some geometry out, in which case you can simply select or deselect any sketch geometry before you click the OK button in the mirror dialog box. Everything looks good for now, so I'll simply click the OK button in the mirror dialog box. Let's now take a look at a few details of our mirrored sketch. First, you'll notice that we have all these mirror or symmetry constraints, which signify the parts of the sketch geometry that are mirrored. You'll see that this can get quite busy or distracting, especially if you're trying to focus on the dimensions. If that is the case, you can always uncheck the Show Constraints option in the Sketch Palette, which hides all of the constraints. 
For now, I'll turn them back on so I can show you a few more details. Mirroring sketch geometry helps save you time while working on symmetric designs. And it makes it easy to update dimensions because if we change one, then the mirror side will update accordingly. I'll simply double click on the circle dimension to edit the dimension. And I'll type out 30 millimeters. And then I'll click the enter key on my keyboard. Notice how the circle on the mirrored side updates as well, as long as this mirror constraint remains intact. In some scenarios, you may have mirrored geometry and later realize that you don't want the geometry to update according to the mirror. If that is the case, then you can simply delete the mirror constraint to break the mirror relationship. Let's look at this by continuing with the circular geometry. I'll simply select the mirror constraint icon that's attached to the circle and I'll hit the delete key on my keyboard. If I now edit the dimension and type out 20 millimeters, you'll notice that the circle on the right hand side did not update. If you've ever deleted the mirror or symmetry relationship, then you can always reapply it using the symmetry constraint. To use the symmetry constraint, you'll need to select at least two sketch entities and a mirror line. I'll go ahead and reapply the symmetry constraint to the circles. I'll hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I'll select the circle on the left, the circle on the right, and then I'll select the mirror line. Then I can either select the symmetry constraint in the sketch palette or I can right click to select the symmetry constraint from the right click menu. After applying the symmetry constraint, you'll notice that the icon appears next to both circles. And if I update the dimension on the first circle, then the mirrored circle will once again update accordingly now that that symmetry relationship is back intact. Another important thing I want to point out is that based on this mirrored sketch geometry, there are two different closed profiles. As I hover my mouse over the sketch, you'll see that the left half is one and the right half is another. If I wanted this sketch geometry to be just one closed profile, making it simple for me to use the extrude command, then I could select the vertical mirror line and hit the construction option in the sketch palette. By turning the mirror line into a construction line, You'll notice that it no longer affects the closed profile, and I now have only one profile shape. It's also important to note that you don't have to apply construction after the fact. You can also use construction lines as the mirror line when using the sketch mirror command. I'll now hit the stop sketch button in the toolbar, and I'll double click on the second sketch to open it up. For this sketch geometry, I have a part that is not entirely symmetrical. However, I want this slot to be mirrored to the other side. First, I'll need to create a line that I can use for the mirror line. I'll select the line tool from the sketch dropdown list, and then I'll turn on the construction line option in the sketch palette. I'm going to click at the bottom where the line snaps into the midpoint as signified by the triangle midpoint constraint. Then I'll place the second point of the line at the center point of the circles above. I'll now hit the keyboard shortcut letter S as in Sierra to activate the sketch shortcuts box. I'm going to type out the word mirror and you'll notice that both the sketch mirror command and the create mirror commands come up. Now the difference is hard to see at first, but if I zoom in on this, you'll notice that the icons actually differ, which is why I wanted to point this out. The create mirror command, which is used for faces, bodies, features, and components has a three dimensional icon. Whereas the sketch mirror command that we're looking for has this two dimensional or flat mirror icon. So the difference is very subtle, maybe almost too subtle to notice. So just be aware if you're ever using the sketch shortcuts box that you're selecting the correct mirror command.
I'll select the sketch mirror command and then I'll select the sketch geometry that makes up the slot command. You'll notice that I can also include this slot construction line as part of the geometry to mirror. I'll select the mirror line selection and for the mirror line itself, I'll select the construction line that we drew in the middle of the geometry. You'll notice the preview looks correct, so I'll click OK. The main reason that I wanted to demo this sketch geometry was to point out that mirror geometry does not need to be concentric or touching at the mirror line, which is often a point of confusion with new users. Lastly, I should also point out that the mirror line does not need to be a vertical or horizontal line. However, in most scenarios, you'll find yourself using them. If I reactivate the mirror command and select the circle geometry at the top, you'll notice that I can mirror this geometry upon any of the linear lines. So it's important to note that the lines do need to be linear. You can't use other types of nonlinear sketch geometry, such as circles or arcs, as the mirror line. In summary, the sketch mirror command lets you reproduce or copy the selected geometry to the other side of the mirror line. The sketch mirror command is not to be confused with the create mirror command that works on features, faces, bodies, and components. Essentially, the sketch mirror command is available to help speed up your workflow when working with symmetrical sketches. If you made it to the end of this video, then please let me know by commenting below and telling me if you learned a trick or two in this video. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch, so if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please click that thumbs up icon and click on that playlist in the lower right hand corner to watch the rest of the Fusion 360 sketch commands. Lastly, if you're new to the channel, be sure to click that red subscribe button and click that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.